A deadly shooting rampage hits home, survivors reliving the terror that struck the landing. We just saw somebody just like standing there with hand, two hands on a gun and just walking back. The first gunshot sounded like a balloon pop. Two victims shot to death, 10 others shot and wounded by this gunman who opened fire at a video game tournament before taking his own life. I was right there. I was, um, was right in front of me. Um, I saw the one, I saw, I actually saw the two people that were killed. Now, as tributes pour in for the two victims who were killed, questions remain unanswered about the motive behind the shooting spree. Good evening, everyone. In the past two hours, we learned new information about this shooting. Police say the gunman, David Katz, was clearly targeting other gamers when he opened fire at the Good Luck Have Fun Bar inside Chicago Pizza at the landing. Officers believe although Katz had two handguns, he only fired one, and they say he had extra ammunition. These are the two men who were killed, Taylor Robertson and Eli Clayton. Robertson was 27 years old from Ballard, West Virginia. He leaves behind a widow and a young son. Robertson had a career winnings of more than $80,000. He was a Tennessee Titans fan. Clayton, who was 22 years old, was from Woodland Hills, California. He had six brothers and three sisters. He played high school football and was a gaming champion who is being remembered by his family for his humility. Our family has been forever changed. Nothing will replace the love that we have for Elijah. There is a hole that will never be filled. And after, so at this moment, we ask for privacy. We have not made funeral arrangement yet. But when they are made, we will make those um, arrangements available. We just ask you to continue to lift this family up in prayer, as well as the families who have also been um, affected by this tra tragedy. From Baltimore, Maryland, in court documents related to his parents' divorce, his mother says she would confiscate her son's gaming equipment after finding him playing overnight. And she says when she put his gaming controllers in her bedroom behind a locked door, he punched a hole in that door. At times, he would refuse to go to school or even bathe due to his obsession with video games. Now, yesterday, this video shows federal agents raiding his home. They spent several hours searching for evidence, even calling the bomb squad as a precaution. And we sent I-Team investigator Vic Michelucci to get more information about the shooter's past. And he's joining us live from Baltimore. Vic, what else were you able to uncover? Well, we have learned some very disturbing details about his past. He lived here most recently with his father, who actually works for NASA. I'm told he comes from a good family. But later in the afternoon, we found court records showing a bitter divorce between his mother and his father. In those records, we found that as a teenager, he was hospitalized at least twice in psychiatric facilities. He was also prescribed anti-psychotic and antidepressant medications. And we learned that his parents frequently argued over his mental health. It's a terrible thing. Neighbors reacting to the news that a young man who lived in this quiet Baltimore townhome went on a rampage in Jacksonville, killing two people, injuring more than a dozen. These condos down here are definitely high-level condos for generally for people that have a lot of money would be my presumption. Security guards watching David Katz's home, owned by his father, Richard, who works for NASA. And this is because of the Katz family? Yeah. A very different scene yesterday. Within hours of the shooting, the FBI and ATF raiding at this home, searching for clues about the competitive gamer seen in this clip from 2017. He's not here to make friends. He's all business. He's focused. And to even get him to open up to talk to you about anything, it's, it's like pulling teeth, man. 30 minutes away in Ellicott City, word is spreading at the high school that the shooter graduated from in 2011. What do you think about it? That's pretty scary, especially like being from around here and stuff and how close it is. Ten minutes from there in Columbia, the gunman's mother's home. Court records show she has a Ph.D. and works at the FDA. Out front, a man telling us to leave immediately. Reserve, 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 reserve. Okay. Go to your left. It'll say reserve. Okay. So please move your vehicle. Okay. Now, a lot of people asking what might have been found in the property searches that the FBI and ATF agents did yesterday. 
They were not commenting, saying that the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office is the lead on the investigation, deferring all questions to them. However, they did say around 11 o'clock last night that this area was safe and the community was not in danger. Reporting live tonight in Baltimore, Maryland, I'm Vic Michalucci, Channel 4, the local station. Vic, have you been able to learn anything else about his personal life, including his family? So we have reached out to so many different people, but we haven't found anyone who claims to be a close friend. By all accounts, it appears that this young man was a loner. We have heard that again and again. We did find out in court records that he had a brother, an older brother, about two years older than him. We did see a young man that looked very similar to Katz walking into the home earlier today. We're not sure if it was the brother, but we did see that. I also spoke with a man who is close friends with the family, especially the father, Richard Katz. He says the father is a very good man. He's devastated about what happened here. All right, Vic Michalucci reporting to us live from Baltimore, Maryland. Thank you, Vic. People from all over the country travel great distances to take part in these gaming tournaments. News for Jack's reporter Zach Lashway is joining us live with some insight into the gaming world. Zach, what are gamers telling you about these competitions? Well, Tom, they tell me they're typically a lot of fun, but tonight they say they are all hurt. Some are angry, but all are sad over the senseless loss of their fellow gamers. We spoke via FaceTime with gamer and eSports coach William Simmons from his home in South Carolina. Doing more morning than anything else, and more of people can't believe this type of event took place, um, especially with EA and all the things they've done with uh, the Madden tournaments. In his own words, Simmons talks about the mass shooting at the landing. It's a soft target. Um, not a lot of people are thinking, oh, you know, we have to worry about this at these type of events. And everyone does need to think about security measures. Uh, I think this was just a wake up call. And Simmons says the need for security needs to happen sooner rather than later. Yeah, as a gamer, I would like to see uh, more security, of course, um, but just more acknowledgement of the fact that they're does need to be security at our events. We're growing tremendously. It's about to hit its first billion dollars in revenue, right? So now it's become, everybody knows there's large crowds. So it's a soft target at this point. Which is surprising, Ad Simmons. I mean, the the Dota 2 tournament uh, cash prize was 24 million plus uh, dollars. So you can definitely make a living off it. It takes like any other sport, it takes dedication. And a lot of heart. And like any other sport, there's a culture in gaming. People are competitive. You know, it's a lot of trash talking. Um, but there are also people who don't trash talk. And are just there to play their luck and have fun. Now, I want to mention, a lot of the gamers we tried speaking with today did not want to talk to us. They are upset about the headlines of gun violence now forever being a part of their gaming community. Now, as you can see behind me, the landing tonight sits quiet and very still. You can see there is crime tape still up on the south end of that facility. I am told they plan on opening the landing tomorrow. As for good luck, have fun, that is not clear on when that store will reopen. In Jacksonville, I'm Zach Lashway, Channel 4, the local station.